and look what we have here. Hello, little friends. This is Rusey. This is Clyde. Clyde peed on me earlier, and I wasn't too happy about it, was I, buddy? No, I don't know what got into you. Okay. How's everybody doing today? Thanks for tuning in for another video. As you can see, we've got some nice weather here. And we're going to use this time to do a little work. Um, as you guys have seen in the past, I salt most of uh, or my two biggest accounts with five-gallon buckets. Recently bought this uh, used uh, Meyer salt spreader. I believe it's a salt spreader 240, they call it, because it'll hold uh, 240 pounds of salt. Uh, what we're going to do here today is a little maintenance to it. And we're going to use uh, some jumper cables, just your standard jumper cables to actually wire this up, get a switch in the cab. Um, we got these nice little quick connects here. I'll show you how these work. They can be used on a lot of stuff. Um, we're just going to put a little grease on everything. And once we get the uh, salt, they're all hooked up. We're going to put some salt in it and we're actually going to go use it. And we're going to show you and uh, I'm going to see for myself how this works. So uh, let's get to work here. Let's see what we can get done. Before we get started here, just want to show you guys something I saw the other day. Uh, I'm doing this work and I keep uh, my this trailer here with the skid on it at my dad's shop. And while I'm here doing the wiring, I came over to see how everything's doing. Everything's looking really well. Not getting a lot of snow load. Put some plywood up here over the uh, the ladder rack just to make sure nothing, uh, no weight came on here. The only thing that I was kind of surprised by is I put a little bit of uh, uh, antifreeze down in here for... It's a little RV antifreeze, and I must not have had the right solution, or I guess the right mix, and that's frozen. But uh, the bulkheads don't look too bad, and once we start getting some warmer weather here in the spring, we will uh, see how everything looks. But I took off the hose off the Titan reel, and I took all the pumps off, and the, uh, the proportioner, the metering system. So all that's out here is really just uh, plastic and metal. But let's get back to what we're doing here. So one of the things that we're going to be working on today here is replacing this auger. It's a stainless steel auger, um, but as you can see, it's kind of made for, I'm assuming, really coarse material, where what I'm using is kind of like a fine salt and uh, sometimes a sand mix. So I went to Myers and I got this brush. It was highly recommended for uh, the kind of material that I want to spread. So we're going to put that in there and uh, put some never seize on it and then i think i'm just going to loosen up a couple of these bolts here and just put some uh, pb blaster on them just so if i ever need to take this hopper off and do some maintenance uh we won't have it we won't have an issue okay one of the first things you want to do here look this isn't on all the way i'm just going to try to crank this nut off actually you know what this is probably going to be a lot better with a socket wrench fire while we're in here real quick it's cold out okay Okay, so we got the nut off. I'm gonna pull the bolt. We're gonna end up putting a little grease on that. And let's just see here. Okay, so. So this is actually gonna be a pretty, uh, a pretty easy little change out here. It seems like, usually doesn't go that way. But we're gonna just slide 
our brush auger back on here down in the hole let's find out where our bolts are there where are you there we go okay now before we put that back on there stuff's great anises lubricants for aluminum but it really works great on everything or i'm sorry it's an aluminum anises get our nut back let's spin this around here Okay. Well, look what we have here. Hello, little friends. This is Rusey. This is Clyde. Clyde peed on me earlier, and I wasn't too happy about it, was I, buddy? No, I don't know what got into you. Okay. Now, what I want to do is just quick. I just want to take off. I just want to lift these up just a little bit a couple rotations and i just want to squirt some pv blaster in there so let's take a look at that real quick So that's all done didn't take too long um now what we're going to do is we're going to be using standard jumper cables and we're going to be connecting them to these nice little uh, uh engine control uh quick connects and we're going to see how uh we can connect this to that and run into a switch at the battery so we can control our motor from the cab so the first thing we want to do here is uh well Cut those right off. And there goes everything. So, these are actually pretty simple to use. They're nice and heavy duty. Uh, I don't know exactly what they are. 14 gauge jumper cables? I don't know. I'm not an electrician. But, uh, basically we're going to cut the heads off here. Just like so. And let's go ahead and open up our box here. Basically, it's just like crimping any other wire. It's actually a little long there. So this is actually, you guys will see how... Uh, how convenient this can be to have a permanent sorry I got something in my mouth here I got one of these other little metal connectors in my mouth hold on what am I doing here go up here to the blue and crimp it These cutters have seen better days. All right, this is the other thing that was in my mouth there. So now that that's out, I can talk like a human being. Um, this is going to run from the front of my truck back to here, basically just be tucked under the bumper. And I'm going to be able to quick connect it to this machine. I'm thinking about having something similar in the summer with a quick connect for my 12 volt pumps. And then it'll also be able to connect into here in case uh, I ever have an issue with a charge on my batteries uh, while I'm on a job, I'll be able to just connect my pumps into here and then have a, an already dedicated switch for a power source to here. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But um, basically, all you have to do now is this end here is positive 
negative. The orange one here is our positive. It's basically your red and it just slides in and clips. See it kind of pushed through there. Do the other one. So this is the negative. Goes in the back. So you kind of just push right through. So now we're going to do the same on the other end. Well, actually, I'm sorry. We're going to do the same on the end of this black and red wire. And then we're going to be able to connect these together. And then I'm basically going to run the rest of this wire up towards the front of the truck. So let's, uh, so let's skip forward a little bit for that. Okay, so we've gone ahead. This is the positive and negative coming out of the motor here on the spinner for our salting machine. And we have our jumper cable connect. That was all set up and we just did the same on our power side to our motor now these two will click and connect together when we're all done dragging this through the mud because i still have to run all this under the truck we have some dielectric grease that we're going to put in here if you guys uh, don't use this stuff um it's very popular on um you know a lot of different components i use it for the electrodes on the uh, plow hookups keeps moisture out and corrosion this is obviously sitting right behind the salter at the edge of the road or at the back of the truck there hanging by the road so i'm going to load this up pretty good and just try to keep some junk out of there so that's that and uh now we just need to tuck this wire and run it a little bit before we do that we'll check our fire we like our fires around here make her dance a little bit it's cold out and i'm about to be crawling under the truck so i'm gonna want a little heat when we're done okay okay so we got it all raw and i kind of figured it'd be better to come over the bumper through the tailgate and then this i'm actually going to zip tie up here so it's not hanging when it's not in use but basically what we're going to do is clip let's go see if we have power basically we just wired into a switch here these are for the lights that i have my plow lights my uh emergency fire response lights my backup lights that's for a uh that bar in the back that big uh backup light bar and this is how i can switch on my salter or turn my salter off so not a bad little project for today seems to be running well what I do want to do is just kind of zip tie a few things here and then I'm thinking about putting some markers on the back here so I can kind of see uh, myself backing up or know where the edge of this is. It does add a little extra uh, length to the truck. So I got a few ideas here and we'll see if they work. Okay, got some zip ties here. Uh, one of the greatest creations on this planet was the modern day classic zip tie. I'm just going to put one around here as an anchor, kind of. And then one, we're going to go through here. And I think just around this pipe here. Okay. And that way, when these are disconnected... <clears throat> 
get some stuff out of here when these are just connected that won't go anywhere so now that we know this is working here's our dielectric grease we're down here on our knee in the cold so we might as well just do this once not have to get down here again so we're just gonna squirt some in here if you guys have never seen this stuff before it kind of just looks like vaseline or some kind of like petroleum jelly then we're just gonna put a little bit in that one it will be a little more room here and there you have it so that'll kind of keep some corrosion out of there all right work really I think what's gonna work really well for markers back here is just driveway stakes so let's go ahead and we're gonna put some zip ties here if you guys aren't in love with zip ties yet these are all no drill well I drill through the plastic but no drill on the metal um, all these lights up here let's see where are we Oh, I guess you can't really see them from here, can you? All the lights up on the back rack here, they're all zip tied in, every single one of them, um, around the frame. There's no drilling into the metal. Um, just keeps things from rusting. I'm a huge fan of zip ties. So basically all we're going to do here, let's see if I can get us in focus. I need a third arm. Okay. See what we want to do here. Probably making it harder on myself. I could just close this on here first. Okay. That was definitely more difficult than it needed to be, but. Okay, slide this one through on this side. Okay, before we tighten that up, that's what we're working with here. And, uh, you just need to be sticking out just far enough to see it. You guys won't be able to see, but I'm gonna go sit in the seat real quick. Look out the mirror, and that's actually perfect. So I can see this end right in my mirror, and that'll kind of let me know if I hit it or something that I'm getting a little close to hitting the salter as well. And uh, on that side, we're just gonna do the same. Just stick it out a little bit. And uh, they're not going to be in there that tight, so I'll adjust it as we're actually putting this thing to use. One idea that I had for this truck this uh, coming year, this coming season, and I'm thinking about taking the box off and putting a, a, uh, a steel deck, flat deck on the back. I think that'd be really easy for sliding uh, the skid on and off to the back and reaching stuff without having to go over the uh, side rails all the time. And then in the winter, if I ever want to get a bed salter, which I think I might, um, if I keep growing my uh, salting business, then that would be really easy as well for accessing. So let me know what you guys think. What do you think this truck would look like with a, with a flatbed on it? And let me know if you guys uh, think it would look good or uh, just keep the box on there. All right, so right now the salter's running. Just want to kind of take a look here at the auger we're dealing with when we're flowing some salt through so that's pretty good it's got some good spread really nice really nice I'll shut that off one reason I wanted to switch away from the metal auger to uh, this brush auger here is because it kind of controls how much material is pulling through a lot better than that auger. You can't really see it there, but the grooves in between the brush lines are actually kind of narrow. So as you guys know, when I'm out doing my salting counts, I'm normally grabbing by hand 
and just throwing it where it needs it. So it's really controlled. I can get through both of my accounts, usually with one bucket. Um, sometimes they really need ice. Yesterday I went and I threw about two buckets because um, it really needed it, but mostly because of how controlled it is, I can throw it by one. So we're gonna test this out and it's basically on the slowest setting with a constricted salt spray. And I think it's gonna be perfect. I don't want uh, too much spraying with the salt. I don't wanna be using too much material. And I think that this brush is gonna kind of just keep it controlled. And it's also gonna allow us to, uh, you know, maybe just use one bucket. So we're gonna fill this up. Uh, we're gonna put a full bucket in there and we're gonna head over to one of my accounts and uh, we'll see how she works. Ugh. All right, let's actually, that's actually half a bucket, maybe a little, a little more than half went in there. Let's just start with that because it's actually really nice out today. Um, I don't really want to go burn through a bucket of salt just because I'm sure they can use some, but uh, I think half, I think this is going to be more than enough. So let's break up some of these chunks and we'll uh, find a place to mount this camera. I mentioned that I like uh, zip ties. So we basically just went around the whole loop. Starts going down here, comes back out over this way. And then uh, obviously we came in from the entrance up here. So let's pop off this lid. And that was only half a bucket. So um, there's still a lot in there. And if you come and look, you got some pretty good, I don't know how good it comes up on camera. Right here, you can really see it in the snow. It's a pretty good amount of salt. You really don't need a lot of salt to get the job done. It's just going to break up the ice. It's going to get some traction. Throwing too much and spreading it um, too wide, too fast, too heavy is going to be damaging for the trees and the plants and everything else. So this seems to be really controlling it. It's, uh, it's not putting out too much. It looks like it's putting out just enough. Um, I'm actually probably just going to take another run through here while I'm here and like I said that wasn't even half uh, I didn't even use half a bucket there so I was, but you can see there's a lot of salt out so I think with that auger that metal auger was in there I think that we would just ripped right through our supply so I think this is a lot more conservative and uh, pretty cool pretty cool pretty cool.